On the 9th of December, 1917, Major General Shea received the surrender of Jerusalem. And on the 11th of December, 1917, General Allenby walked into Jerusalem. On the 11th of December, 2017, a reenactment took place in Jerusalem of that very event. Present at the event was Viscount Henry Allenby of Megiddo on Felixstowe, the great-great-nephew of the Field Marshal, General Allenby, and Mr John Benson, who was the great-grandson of Major General Shea, and also in the presence of the current Mayor, near Barakat. On December the 9th, 1917, two weeks before Christmas, and on the first day of Hanukkah, the British Imperial Army entered Jerusalem under the command of General Edmund Allenby. A new chapter was beginning in the history of Jerusalem, the city holy to Jews, Christians and Muslims, a city that had experienced thousands of years of conflict, sieges, resounding defeats and glorious victories, all conducted in the name of God by mortal rulers aspiring to immortal rule, now those standing at its gates took upon themselves a valued trust, declaring that they would respect the city's past and its traditions. Two days later, at noon, on December the 11th, 1917, the Commander-in-Chief General Edmund Allenby reached the Jaffa Gate and walked to the entrance of the Tower of David, accompanied by his staff officers, senior commanders, and representatives of France and Italy, Britain's allies. Allenby chose to enter the city on foot. On the recommendation of the British diplomat Sir Mark Sykes, after considerable deliberation in London and at military headquarters. This act stood in stark contrast to the grandiose entry of the German Kaiser Wilhelm II, who had ridden on horseback into the city 19 years before, in 1898. This time, in a gesture of humility, no flag was raised, and no hymn was sung to avoid the one sign prevailing over another. Nevertheless, citizens and soldiers alike could not contain the excitement, each memory the melodies of their own beliefs and their own language. In the spirit of the ceremony that took place 100 years ago, we are honored to invite the representatives of the different communities of Jerusalem and our honored guests to read the proclamation each in his own language and in the same order in which the original proclamation was read 100 years ago. We are honored to invite Viscount Henry Allenby of Megiddo and Felixstowe. Furthermore, since your city is regarded with affection by the great adherence of three great religions, of mankind and it is sold has been concentrated by the prayers and pilgrims of multitudes of devout people of these three Greek religions for many centuries. Therefore I do make it known to you that every sacred building, monument, holy spot, shrine, traditional site, endowment, peerless request of customary place of prayer of whatsoever form of these three religions will be maintained and protected according to the existing customs and beliefs to those whose faith they are sacred. Our Prime Minister, Mr. Benjamin Dunyao, is now on an important mission to the European Union concerning Jerusalem. He sent his special briefing. We shall see it later on inside the Citadel. Now I only read a few sentences from our Prime Minister's briefing. Today we recognize the commander who led the British army to the land of Israel, here to the gates of Jerusalem. We also honor the fallen 
among the English soldiers, the Australian and New Zealand soldiers, and the Jews here in the land of Israel who fought in the Jewish Brigade. They all were part of an historic mission and appreciated its importance. Certainly, says our Prime Minister, certainly they must have known that we would commemorate this day and remember them. And indeed, we will remember them, cherish them, and appreciate their contribution forever. Dear Lady Sarah and Lord Henry Vicon Alambi of Megiddo and Felix Stowe family of General Alambi and also John and Christina Benson family of General Shea I'll begin in English in honor of our guests the Alambi and Shea families I want to mention General Alambi he was a great military man who conquered the land of Israel. But in addition to his military strength, he was also a distinguished thinker and understood our city Jerusalem and its role in the world. He understood that Jerusalem has unique properties as a uniting force for the entire world, open for all tribes as represented here in the ceremony. Days after the conquest, he wrote about Jerusalem, every sacred building or custom place of prayer of whatever form of the three religions, we will maintain and protect. Allenby was an essential part of Jerusalem's history, ensuring the city could fulfill its role in the world as a place where religion tolerance and mutual respect are our highest values. The city of peace that General Allenby described represents our aspirations for the city today and into the future. When Lord Allenby entered Jaffa Gate a hundred years ago, he met a small impoverished, neglected city. Even in his lifetime, the city began to change for the better. Now, Jerusalem is undergoing major renaissance, a high-tech renaissance, a cultural renaissance, major investments in infrastructure, working for the benefit of all its re residents. The State of Israel honors the memory of General Alambi, naming streets, squares, and bridges on his name. I want to thank you for coming here today to pay your respect to the liberator of Jerusalem, your ancestor, General Alambi. Thank you for the families for coming here. It's an honor to host you.